Um, I want to talk about what exactly does it mean to put on Christ in the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 14. Have you ever heard uh, the statement put on Christ? In a very real sense, the Christian life is uh, just a put, a, a put on. Because uh, like we read in the book of uh, Romans chapter 13 verse 14, the Bible says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Put on Christ. Mm -hmm. We see the Apostle Paul instructing believers to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and making no provision for the flesh uh, so that you can gratify its desires. And the phrase, put on Christ, uh, means to figuratively block oneself with the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal the glory of God to the world. And Paul was talking about uh, putting on spiritual clothing. Those who clothe themselves with the Lord Jesus are just believers who do not focus on gratifying the desires of the sinful nature. And in the preceding verses, Paul had encouraged the saints to wake from sleep. Okay? He encouraged believers to wake from sleep. In the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11, he says, And that, knowing the time, now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. And of course, they're just uh, waking up from sleep. There's something that uh, also Paul told people that they need to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. That's the next verse, verse 12. Paul paints a vivid picture of moving into a new life in Christ as trading the darkness of night for the light of the day. And as believers, we must not only wake up and throw off our night clothes, but also we are supposed to get dressed in the appropriate fit for the new day. Because our clothes were the deeds of darkness. But the proper new daytime attire for the soldier of Christ is God's armor of light. Do you know the armor of God? According to Ephesians chapter uh, 6 verse 11 to 18. Let me just read to you uh, about this armor that you need to put to put on. All right. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 11 to 18, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins guard about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Are you putting on the whole armor of God? Because uh, the expression put on Christ, it is basically talking about this armor, putting up, following, just meditating, put focus everything on God and not focus on the things of this world. Sometimes we really focus on the things of the world and uh, we forget where we are heading and we forget uh, what we are supposed to be doing. And uh, it's very, very uh, important for you to be able to focus on the things above and not things down here. Because even not only in the, in the book of Romans, we also see again in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 27, Paul still speaking about the same putting on Christ. He says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 
So the moment you're saved, the moment you're saved, you have put on Christ. You have new clothes. You have the righteousness of, of, of Jesus Christ. So there are so many people who are saved, but yet they still want to do things. Uh, they want to follow the flesh instead of following the spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is always day in, day out telling us, uh, do what is right because you've already been saved. It doesn't mean that we can lose our, uh, our salvation, but why would you go against your father? Why would you go against uh, uh, the terms and conditions? It's not okay. It's going to uh, uh, make your relationship with God bad. So that's why the Bible tells us, put on Christ display, have some uh, a good testimony about Jesus Christ. Show, let other people be able to know this person is a Christian, all right? Because when you look at uh, 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 the Bible still, also, uh, let me just, uh, yes, in the book of Romans where I just read to you, the Bible clearly is saying, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now, I want you to think about this verse. If you're baptized into Christ, you've already put on Christ. So if you're put on Christ and we're still living uh, in our old, uh, uh, we still have our old bodies, but then inside we already have Christ. Like It's like we have to... We have two dimensions here. We have two uh, beings who are fighting against each other. We have the spirit, which is the new body that we have, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We have our old self, which is, which is yet to be redeemed when Jesus comes. So we understand we are put on Christ. We are supposed to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. All right? And as in Romans chapter 13, putting on Christ here speaks of having clothed oneself with a new nature. And believers are taught to put on the new self, which is created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, according to Ephesians 4.24. And, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and what? And true holiness. Have you understood that? So, we put on Christ when our old ways are nailed to the cross and we wear the grace and forgiveness of Jesus as a glorious garment for all the world to see. And to the church in Colossae, Paul echoes the teaching, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him, Colossians 3.10. Put on the new nature. You have a new nature and be renewed. Remember, so Paul said, be renewed by the transforming of your mind, the renewal of your mind. Transform yourself. If you're thinking like a, like a, a ghetto person, you didn't know that you're a royal. Start thinking about royalty. Think about how much you're a child of a king that's how you transform your mind don't to live in those old mind and all those old kind of notions and, and the things that you used to think about yourself so lowly and think no we are now new creatures and the spiritual garment no Christian should ever be without it because that spiritual garment is the Lord Jesus Christ we should put on Christ, meaning letting the Lord be our armor, embracing him over and over, and daily trusting him in faith, thankfulness, obedience, and so forth. We should never, never stay away from what is right and walking in the Spirit, all right? So to put on Christ means to follow him in discipleship, letting our lives be conformed to the image of Christ, like the Bible told us in the book of uh, Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8 verse 29, for whom did he, uh, he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, alright? We are supposed to be conformed to the image 
of the Son of God, rather than adapting ourselves to the patterns of this world, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and the modification of our behavior into the model of Christ's life on earth. All right? The Bible says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, we know that this change requires putting off the old self and putting on the new uh, self through the Christian life. Like the Bible says in the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 4 verse 22, it says that you put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which is after God created in righteousness and true holiness put on the new man and also Colossians 3 verse 12 says put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness, humbleness of mind meekness and long suffering so how can you achieve that? To achieve this uh, kind of transformation, we have to rely wholly on our righteous standing before God, made possible in Jesus Christ. Do you know you're righteous in Christ Jesus? The Bible told us so. It says that uh, in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Right now, there is no difference between you and Christ. When God looks at you, he sees the righteousness of Jesus in you. So there is no difference between you and Christ. You're both children of the Father. He looks at you the way he loves Jesus. That's exactly the same way he loves you. Because you don't possess your own righteousness. You possess the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And also 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he has made him to be seen for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? Jesus became sin. He took all our sin away. He became sin. The way we have been seen, it's like we poured all our sin on him. And he gave us his righteousness. And because Jesus is very powerful, he could defeat death and defeat sin. He defeated it by himself. And uh, we have to understand, putting on Christ means abiding. In Jesus and living to please him as John Wesley described this is a strong and beautiful expression for the most intimate union with him and being clothed with all the graces which were in him we are clothed we have to understand we are clothed in Christ when we become so closely united with Jesus that others just see him and they don't see us have you ever been to a point whereby people are just saying ah this guy behaves like why were people called Christians? Because they be, they behave like like Christ. But today, modern Christians are, are many of them behaving like Christ. Mm-mm. They be, be behaving like pagans. They're calling themselves Christians. So we should be different, different. That's why we should be Bible believers. Bible believers. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you didn't learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need uh, step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some 
you know cool christian merchandise kindly visit our website keithmore.com for more details and breakdowns otherwise i hope to see you soon in the next one